Welcome back guys. In this lecture 5, I am going to discuss Sobolov spaces denoted by W1P. So in general, this is WNP, but I am going to discuss W1P spaces for now. Okay. Okay. So how do I define these spaces? Sorry. So the space W1P, so I'm I'm just discussing W1P now. And later on, I'll be discussing the space WNP in general. So it's the space of functions such that the function is in uh, LP and the derivative of the function exists. And here, if I talk about the derivative, it's always the weak derivative. And we have defined what do you mean by weak derivative in our previous lecture. And DF also belongs to LP of omega. Let me mention everywhere that I'm using the set W1P over omega. So this is how, how we define Sobolev spaces. So this space is denoted by W and one denotes only the first derivative, first peak derivative, and P denotes like what LP space you are going to use. So, so you take a function, the function must be in LP and its first derivative should also be in LP. I call this space W1P on omega, and this is what we call a Sobolev spaces. So function should be in LP and its derivative should be in LP on omega, where this P can be anything between one and infinity. So this TF can be the derivative in any direction. If your function is a function that depends upon n entries, then you have di of f, it means all the derivatives should also be in LP. The derivatives in each component in each direction, but this should only be, only be the first derivative, not many more derivatives, where i can be anything between one and n. Okay, so this is how I define this space. Now I'm saying this is a normed space. Now to define what's going to be the norm on this space. Now there are there are many ways to define this norm, but I'm going to define it in a very simple way. So if I have F, it's W1P norm over omega is defined to be, I'm taking F and it's LP norm over omega, and I'm adding something to it. Because if this is only LP norm, then this is going to be LP space, not a Sobolev space. So, what am I going to add? I'm going to differentiate this once and taking its LP, LP norm. And I'm adding these all the terms from one to n because there are n dimensions. This function is n dimensional having n arguments. So this is how I define this norm. So based on this norm, we can say that, okay, this Sobolev space is basically a normed space. And after the notion of the normed space, you know very well, we can move ahead and say that, okay, is this complete or not? And if, if the space is complete, we call this is a uh, Banach space or complete space. So the completeness can be inherited from LP spaces. And we have discussed in the previous lecture, okay, that LP spaces are Banach spaces. So let me, let me mention a fact. And the fact is, this LP and these W1Ps are Banach spaces. So these spaces are Banach spaces and we can prove this claim easily by using some standard techniques from function analysis. But since this is not the motive of this course, 
only our motive is we we have to know that okay what do we mean by subalover spaces and what are going to be some of the properties of subalover spaces so let me define now the weak derivative since we have defined already the weak derivative but i can i can define it in a more general way for for let's say some higher derivatives it's not going to be the first derivative only but if we need more derivatives then how can we define this notion of weak derivative so i'm taking f from l1 and omega is some sort of subset of rn we say g is the derivative of our f it's the alpha -th order derivative of f in other words where you know very well this alpha is multi index alpha 1 alpha 2 up to alpha n and i can define the order of alpha to be some of these alpha i's from 1 to n now if for all phi to be from c infinity with compact support you know very well these are like test functions but we are going to define what do we mean by test functions but these are some sort of smooth functions which are zero at the boundary and beyond and like there is some sort of compact support to that function then i take f and i take the alpha derivatives of phi and i integrate this over omega then i get g times phi integrated over omega and the coefficient should be negative one as we know there should be negative one from the previous lecture but this should be raised to the order of alpha because like we want alpha -th order derivative so like we have to integrate by parts this alpha times and then we get this term now So this is how I define the weak derivative. So this is this is called G is called weak like alpha order weak derivative of F. So you differentiate F alpha times and this is how you define it. Where what does this notion mean? What do I mean by this thing? Let me tell you. So since alpha is a multi-index and phi is a function, so it's simply, I'm going to differentiate alpha one times with respect to x one to the alpha one, differentiate alpha two times with respect to x two, and so on up to differentiate alpha n times with respect to xn, the function phi, because this is the function phi that I've mentioned so far. That's, I think, clear from here. So this is how we define the weak derivative in a more general way. So this is not the first weak derivative, first order. This is going to be the alpha -th order, order weak derivative. After this, I'm going to like define Sobolov spaces in a more general way, what we call WNP Sobolov spaces. And how do I define this thing? This thing is that F such that F is in LP and not the derivative of F in LP, but all the alpha order derivatives should be in LP, where alpha is anything which is less than or equal to n. So now I have n, before I had only one. So I'm saying my function should be in LP and all its derivatives till order alpha. So like first derivative, second derivative to order n derivative should be in, in the uh, LP space. So this is how I define Sobolov space WNP. And again, I can define a norm over this space and I can talk about whether this space is complete or not. So WNP, so if my F is in WNP, so it's WNP norm over omega is again 
I am taking LP norm of F over omega and I am adding something to it. So what am I adding? All the alpha derivatives and their LP norm and some for all alpha to be less than or equal to n. So you can take all the possible combinations of the derivatives and you take their LP norm and you sum them all and you add the LP norm of F, this in whole should be, uh, is, is how we define the norm on this subval of space. And we say that, okay, this space, uh, WNP over omega is a, is a Banach space. Okay, so this is how we how we define what is a Sobolova space and how we define weak derivative again. We define a general Sobolova space. Now, I'm going to provide some rules for the differentiation and integration maybe in the Sobolova spaces. And the first rule is what we call product rule. And how, how is this rule defined? I'm taking F from W1P. And if I have taken F from W1P, it means I, I'm going to talk about the first derivative of F. I cannot talk about more derivatives because I'm only allowed to talk about the first derivative, but only in the weak sense. And G is also W1P over omega. It implies the product of these should also be in W1P over omega. This is one, one claim. And the another claim that I'm going to make is if I differentiate the product of F and G, so this is not the classical derivative. This is the weak derivative. This is the thing that we have to keep in our mind. So it's the weak derivative of F times G plus weak derivative of g times f. So this is simply the product rule that we have already. But now this derivative is going to be made sense in, in, in a weak sense. And how can we talk about these all the things? Let me add one thing here. This g is from w1p prime. This is our assumption then the product of these should be from W11, not W1P. And these P and P prime are conjugate numbers. And this is 1 over P plus 1 over P prime should be equal to 1. So let me add one thing here, that this derivative of F is from LP and G is from LP prime. This derivative of G is from LP prime and F is from LP. So their product will be from L1 or in other words from the Sobolova space uh, W11. Okay, this is how, how, we, how we define the product rule and now I'm going towards chain rule. Sorry. So the chain rule is I'm taking f from c1 omega and now I'm taking f from c1. It should be continuous and continuously differentiable ones. And my f is also bounded. And I will use this boundedness when I'm going to define uh, chain rule. So G is W1P. So G is from the Sobolova space. Then the derivative of F after G. So this is the composition of F and G. So this composition would be from L1. This is, I think, very much clear because F is from C1 and G is from W1P. So this is F prime after G, this is how we define, you differentiate F and you evaluate that derivative at G multiplied by the weak derivative of G. So this belongs to this whole result belongs to L1 and W1P over omega. I think this P should be 
P should be a general P or P should be equal to one. I think this this should be L W one one, not W one P in general. But if we have taken G from W one P, then the derivative of uh, G should be from from L P. Yeah, so this should be from L P. F prime is continuous and uh, yeah, it makes sense. The next theorem is the fundamental theorem of calculus in this sense of weak derivative. So this is FTOC and there are two results that I'm going to mention. So the first one is I'm taking G which is L1 over AB. So G is a function which is from the space L1 and I'm defining f of x to be the integral of G from A to x. Then this f will be from the Sobolov space W11 over AB. So I've taken a G. So this is G from L1 but then my f becomes from W11. We can see this thing from, from ordinary fundamental theorem of calculus in the sense of classical derivatives. Okay, you have some integral of some function which is continuous, then the then the integral of that function is going to be C1. So here C1 becomes W11 because W11 involves one derivative. So it's like the analogous version of the class C1. Okay, so the second result that I have so far is I'm taking f from the Sobolov space W11 and my g is the derivative of f. So whenever I write here df, it is not the classical derivatives, derivative, but it's the weak derivative. Then If I define f of x to be in this way, some constant plus a, a integral a to x, g of s ds for some c in r, for some c in r. This simply means that if g is the derivative of f, then f can be written as the integral of f, integral of g. So if g is the derivative of f, then I can write f as some constant plus the integral of g. So it means if I take any function from the from the Sobolov space w11, you can see I've taken f from w11. Then for each such f, so for each such f from the Sobolov space w11, there exists a representation. So I can give it a representation of f that is continuous. So for each f from, from the space W11, I can write it in some sort of uh, continuous representation in terms of let's say integrals. So this is a general result. So the takeaway of this lecture is what is the definition of Sobolov space? And uh, after defining Sobolov spaces, we move towards uh, defining the weak derivative in a more general way from the previous class. And then we define V Sobolov spaces in a more general way, the WNP Sobolov space. And these all spaces are Banach spaces. So these are complete normed spaces. And we have the product rule, the chain rule, and the fundamental theorem of calculus in this weak setting and in the setting of uh, Sobolov spaces. Okay, so I think that uh, this lecture doesn't involve maybe so many details, only a few definitions are there. 
in the next lecture i'll be going more towards maybe test functions and uh, distributions and maybe at the end of the lecture we'll discuss Shiva's class and we'll discuss some of their properties and after a couple of lectures we'll move towards defining Fourier transform and uh, proving some sort of properties and then we'll be moving ahead to discuss in detail what we need to discuss for this course like partial differential equations. So till that see you and goodbye.